In this video, I'm going to attempt to reverse engineer and tear down an active battery balancer. I've no plans to actually build a DIY but BMS version though, so uh, this is purely for information. These devices can be found all over AliExpress and eBay. I think the original design came from Helltech, but I could be wrong about that. This board is a four to six cell balancer, which uses capacitors to uh, balance the energy in the cells. It's quite a difficult board to trace as they deliberately use black PCBs and also scratch off the identification writing on some of the chips. However, I've already broken this board, so uh, one day the uh, capacitors got hot and it's never really worked properly since. So I've got nothing to lose in a teardown. I'll also show you a uh, working simulation of how these devices work later in the video. At first glance, it appears the board is split into the main balancing circuit with three capacitors per cell, a voltage regulation circuit and some contr control logic. So let's start with the basics and trace the connections from the cell inputs. This is the bottom of the board. On the left is the most positive terminal and on the right is the, the negative, uh, marked as the B minus. Each cell connection follows a very similar path, going through what I believe is a surface mount fuse and into a large capacitor. Now, Googling has uh, let me down with the identification of this part. It has a marking of U written on it, which I think is a fuse, but I could be wrong. This trace then supplies the drain terminals onto NicoSEM N-channel MOSFETs. There's nothing particularly unusual about the MOSFET. It has a low RDS on value of four, uh, four milliohms and can handle up to 35 amps, which is plenty for this task. If we draw on the capacitors, you can see how it's laid out. You can see the capacitors sit between the cells. I expect you might also get a little spark when you connect the board to the balance cable. There's going to be a large inrush current into those caps. On the left, there are two diodes linking between cells four, five, and six. If you're using this board in a 4S configuration, this allows the voltage to reach the regulator in the bottom left of the circuit. Let's zoom into that regulator while we're talking about it. I've attempted to follow the traces and highlight them in this photo. The regulator chip appears to be a SL3037B. This took a bit of googling to find, but seems to be manufactured by a Chinese company uh, called Senliwell. It's a fairly typical DC to DC step down converter. Uh, their data sheet isn't very useful, but I've also found references that this chip is uh, pin compatible with the uh, monolithic power 2456 chip, um, which has a much better documentation. This combination of resistors set the output voltage, which according to the data sheet should be around 10 volts. Jumping to the opposite corner of the board, there's a bunch of circuitry which I'm guessing is some sort of control logic. It appears to be using the voltage from cell 1, fed into one of two ICs. C73 and B83 are voltage detector chips. The C73 allows voltages over 2.7 volts and switches off if it's below that. B83 is very similar, but switches on at 1.8 volts. There's a jumper blob of solder on the board for selecting the range you want. So this circuitry appears to be a minimum cell voltage at which balancing is enabled, although this is only checking cell 1. In my case, if cell 1 is over 2.7 volts, then balancing is switched on. That voltage is then fed into a device marked W1A. This appears to be a NPN transistor, which is switched on by the C73 chip. This switch on makes the collector go to ground, switching on another transistor marked JAD39. Now, once this is switched on, it then passes 10 volts into a device C1TK, um, otherwise known as a 3.3 volt regulator. So up to now, all this logic um, is simply switching on a 3.3 volt regulator if cell one goes over 2.7 volts. Uh, nothing too crazy there. Now we've got a, a five pin device marked C14F, uh, which is actually an inverting Schmidt trigger. So the surrounding passive components uh, form a, what's known as an RC oscillator feeding into the trigger. So the idea of this is that it will basically uh, oscillate and, and pulse on and off uh, through through this, the uh, Schmidt trigger. The output of the chip is marked in green, 
and if I open that up on my oscilloscope, you can see a very flat straight line, um, which isn't correct. We should have a pulsing output on this chip, so I suspect whatever happened to this board has destroyed that trigger, along with the 10 volt power regulator. So let's recap. We have a 10 volt regulated voltage, which is stepped down to 3.3 volts, and used to power a pulse generator circuit. This is enabled when this first cell is over 2.7 volts. The remaining parts on this board are all related to the actual balancing function, so let's take a closer look at those. The 8-pin chip you see in this photo, I believe, is a MOSFET gate driver chip. There are six in total. This chip has had all its markings removed, but from what I can deduce, it has two outputs, and each output drives a pair of MOSFETs. That means there are 24 MOSFET switches on this ban balancer circuit in total. Now, while I've not been able to identify this exact chip using the board, I suspect it's very similar to this one. This gate driver chip has two outputs, and one of them is inverted in respect to the other. This is very important in the balance circuit, as only one set of MOSFET switches can be on at any one time. Now for a bit of fun with a virtual example of how the balancer circuit works. On screen, you can see a representative circuit diagram of a typical 4S capacitor-based active ba battery balancer. That's a bit of a mouthful. So this circuit has four sections, just like the real board does. Um, I'm using capacitors to emulate uh, the battery cells. So these cells are all different voltages. So first one is three volts. 3.45 volts, 3.65 volts, and finally 3.3 volts. So straight away we've got quite a large imbalance between those cells. In front of that we've then got the first set of capacitors, just like our board has, and then this charging switch. Now this section here is basically the first set of MOSFET drivers. Uh, and as you can see, there's two MOSFETs per, per cell. Then in the middle, we've got um, two capacitors per cell. Again, you can see that on the physical board we've got. And then finally, the remaining MOSFETs. Again, another two per, per cell. Now, the uh, trigger logic, which we uh, looked at on the board, is basically represented by this circuit here. So this generates a pulse and this inverts it. So the uninverted version goes down to the charging switch and the inverted one goes to the parallel switch. And that makes sure that only one of those is ever on at a time and it will flip between those two on and off, on and off. I've also added some um, voltage measurements down here. So when we actually run this, you'll be able to see, that, see those kicking in and also some current measurements as well. At the minute, they're meaningless numbers, but... Uh, so if we run this through sl slowly, and I'll just stop it there. Um, what we can see when we first initially run it is the, obviously all the voltage measurements kick in. So you can see the cell, vo cell voltages now. And straight away this um, charging switch MOSFET is enabled. Now what that does is allow the voltage or the, the current to move from the battery or each, each of the cells, sorry, uh, up the circuit to then charge up all three capacitors. And it does that on each of these cells. So, and this is the uh, the current that's flowing between each, each of them. Obviously, again, these are all sort of virtual sort of uh, values based on this circuit. So as, as we can see up here, we've got these voltages uh, on these capacitors here at uh, 1.3 volts, 1.5 volts, 1.6 volts, 1.46 volts. And the, the balancing process um, will initially charge those up to be exactly the same as the cell voltages down here. So if I carry, let it carry on running, you can now see they, these are slowly increasing um, and the voltage is moving across. And likewise, the current are all dropping as well as the voltage equalizes. Okay, so now what's happened is the voltage of the cells has transferred up into these capacitors. 
So you can see these these broadly align with the uh, voltages that you've got on each of the cells. This inverter has flipped around, so now we've switched off the charging circuit. It's now gone grey, and but we have enabled this parallel switch. Now the parallel switch will basically join all these capacitors together in a parallel configuration, which will then force the voltage to equalize across all the capacitors. So if we carry on the running this, we should now see that the voltage will start going up and down on each of those cells until it actually equals the same. Okay, and now this is flipped over again. So now we've disabled the parallel switch. Um, and although it's not completely balanced uh, with regards to the top, that really depends on how long the, the pulses last for. Um, but you can see that um, what, what has happened is that the voltage here, which was 3.6, has now dropped down to 3.3. Um, but more importantly, the, the lowest cell that we've got here, which is now at 2.9, is now got a higher capacitor on this side at 3.2. So now the switch is uh, reopened on the charging switch, that 3.2 voltage will move down into that uh, capacitor and cell, basically increasing the voltage on this one, whilst at the same time reducing it off the high one. And you can see the uh, currents are negative on here because it's charging this cell, but discharging these higher ones, and this one's charging up as well. And then as the voltages equalize, the current starts to drop. And then we flipped over again to uh, parallel. So if I speed this up, you should be able to st start, start to see these voltages at the bottom uh, balancing out just as, it, as they would in real life. So this one's already gone over three volts now. And this highest cell at 3.65 originally is now dropping. Again, this was 3.45, so this one's dropping again just to try and equalize it. So we should see the, the these two end ones uh, raising to uh, balance. So I'll put the speed up to full and we'll just let this run out for a, a few seconds. Now, while this balance is out, one of the inherent problems with capacitive balancers is the they're only really that effective when you've got a very high differential between the, the highest and lowest voltage. So if you're only balancing a very small amount, uh, they will take longer and longer and longer to, to process that. So this artificial example has been running for a virtual two seconds of uh, virtual elapsed time. Um, and in, within that time, it's almost balanced the cells. So obviously in reality, um, the, um, you, you will be more limited by current uh, tolerances on the on components and the internal resistance of the cells and things like that. So it would take a lot longer than uh, it's shown here. But the actual principle is exactly the same. So looking at the cell voltages now, we're up to 3.325, 3329, 333, 3328. So we're only within a few few millivolts of, uh, of balance now. And you can also see the these currents, although they're flashing through very, very quickly, if I slow it down a little bit again. Um, whereas these were in the, in the sort of thousands of milliamps at one point, um, they're now only sort of 10 and 12 milliamps. So there we have it, just about uh, complete. So. Again, we're pretty much within one or two milli millivolts of the uh, difference between the cells. Um, and that was obviously starting from a very extreme where one cell was at 3.65 and the other one was, was way, way lower at ne nearly three volts. So I hope you enjoyed that in-depth look at a capacitive balancer. I originally had my doubts on the suitability of these balancers. However, I've recently installed one on my 16S LFP setup. I've definitely noticed an improvement in the balance of the battery, although it's still not perfect. Given that, I'm, that my uh, cells are about 40 millivolt difference at nearly full charge, it would take a very long time for the balancer to achieve anything better.